Drop it time. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I have the Ucatel WP6, a rugged device by Ucatel. It ranges at about £180 in China, and you're talking over £200 in the UK. Inside the box, you obviously get the meaty, chunky smartphone, a manual and warranty certificate. Quite disappointingly, you get a micro USB charging lead and a micro USB OTG cable and you get an 18 watt fast charger. Okay, it's safe to say that this device is an absolute unit. It is really heavy and it's a whopping 7.3 millimeters thick, very solid, and it has a massive 10,000 milliamp battery. Helio P70 Octa-Core processor. There's a fingerprint scanner there on the side. Face ID. We also have a triple camera set up there. And just look at it. On the website, this is apparently aviation metal. Sounds very strong. IP68 waterproof, as you'd expect. And oh God, it is a absolute unit. Let's turn it on, peel that off. 1.1 millimeters thick display or Gorilla Glass. That's stated on their website as well. There's a 6.3 inch full HD display, 2340 by 1080p and there's the front facing camera there at the top. I can show you quickly around the bottom, headphones and a micro USB port. Yeah, so a close look there, 3.5 mm socket and a micro USB connector. I'm not sure why they haven't included type C. Don't really know. On this side, looks like a SIM tray. So there's the, the flap, it's quite tough to get off that was. And there is the SIM tray. So you can have a dual SIM and an SD card at the same time. At the top, there's nothing there. And at the side, a volume rocker, power, and your fingerprint sensor. So I'm gonna set this up, test the, the camera, a few other things, and obviously I'll be doing the drop test. Okay, the phone's set up, but I just pulled the, um, the weighing scales out, because I can't find any weight information online because it is a hefty device and it is heavy. 377 grams. That is a heavy smartphone. Okay guys, here she is. A very nice looking display with a nice fancy wallpaper on there. Viewing angles seem pretty decent as well. And holding it in one hand with my arm up like that, it's gonna knock you out. Yeah, it is a beast of a device. So we'll look at some of the, um, the software. So you get toolboxes, as you always do. Wireless update, I think there is a wireless update available as well, so I'll install that later on. So there's no app drawer on here. This is what you get. So it's nearly a pretty much a stock Android experience with a few other things in there. You've got a system manager as well. Clears your cache, speeds up your phone. At the bottom here, we have a menu button and we have a back button there as well and you can delete all previous used apps by swiping up like that. That's the back button, that's the menu button. You can change these in navigation bar settings and you have navigation bar swipe up on home or you can use the full slide gestures. So it does have reverse charge OTG, so you can use that, that's pretty handy if you need to charge another device, external device. Let's test the fingerprint sensor. That's pretty fast. Yeah, I'm happy about that. So Helio P70, an octa-core CPU, and it's got six gigs of RAM and 128 gigabytes of internal storage. So there's plenty of resources in this device. It's got the Mali G72 graphical chip as well to help towards gaming. This is the menu, what it looks like on there. Pretty standard. So I'm gonna now check out the camera performance on the triple camera setup. Let's look at it, I love it. Really, really nice. Okay, first up. On the smartphone, there's a 48 megapixel option. Click that, and these are the results. I think 
the phone has done a very good job. The clouds look great, the greys and the whites, and the colour accuracy is pretty decent as well. And in terms of detail and quality, very, very good. This shot here is not the 48 megapixel shot. This is just in photo mode. And again, I think the there's really not much difference between this and the 48 megapixel, to be honest. But there again, the uh, it's quite vibrant, nice amount of colour, and very good detail. So bokeh mode. This first shot here, there's a tiny bit of softness in the face there. It has blurred out the background. The second shot here though is a lot better. The subject is more in focus, not blurred out, and the, the background has that nice subtle blur as well. So I think the bokeh effect is working really well here. Switch over to the selfie camera, which is 16 megapixel. Again, done a pretty good job. I've definitely seen worse. There's a little bit of over redness there, which I've noticed on other smartphones before specifically with the MediaTek chips. Uh, but overall, I think that's done a pretty good job. And then if we turn on the bokeh mode, that has blurred out the background nicely on the, the selfie camera. And again, keeping the, um, the quality and the color accuracy. Hello, 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 hello. Right. Where are you going? Hello, 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 hello. Where are you going? For a walk. No, no, no. We'll come back in a minute. Just testing the stability. This is 1080p, no EIS or OIS. The quality looks okay. What are you doing? Nothing. Yep, just testing the video, mate, on this phone. Ouch. So look at this scene. Not you guys think. Sound quality and video quality. It, 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 it. You parked my car thing. really far forward. Yeah. yeah. I'm facing the camera now. I should have put shoes on. No, I took my car. What do you guys think, guys? facing camera okay let me know what you think of the picture quality guys I don't think the picture quality was too bad I mean maybe picture quality and video quality isn't what you're after when you're buying maybe a smartphone like this you obviously want something rugged and something that's gonna last long but nonetheless I think the pictures and videos are quite respectable now the three cameras on the back that is the main camera there at the bottom that's the depth sensor and that is a dummy camera really so it's not really a triple camera setup i covered this lens on every single setting and it didn't make any difference you couldn't it wasn't uh, blocked out or anything but that is definitely the depth sensor and that's definitely the main camera with the flashlight so i did a quick gaming test on the wp6 remember it has six gigs of ram not core processor and a g72 graphical chip and i can tell you it handled call of duty on the high settings really really well high graphical settings high frame rate as well it was visually pleasing and there was smooth gameplay throughout next is the drop test if you've seen my other videos like this i'll drop it out of the first floor window and see if it survives the drop Let's see. Okay, I'm gonna drop it out of the, the window now. This is the front facing camera. It does make my skin look very shiny, and it's not. Okay, right, here we go. Drop it time. I'm ready. Okay, here she is after the, the drop test in the corners there. Look pretty all right, it's got a bit of a, a duffed corner there. And if we go into the front, it's absolutely smashed. So it's failed 
my drop test. I've dropped many a phones out of that window and unfortunately, I'm absolutely gutted. This failed and yeah, it's splintered in there. The LCD's gone underneath as well, you can see. So, quite disappointed really. May have been the way it landed. I think, and also the sheer weight of it as well. I mean, the drop. As soon as I drop it, there's going to be um, an increase in speed and obviously the weight of it. And as soon as it hits the floor, something's got to give. And unfortunately, it was the glass. Unfortunately, the Ukatol WP6 failed, that drop test. The WP5, some months back, that passed it. Anyway guys, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please pop any comments down below. Links to this are in the description as well. Please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.